Me, it doesn't hurt at all. Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, September, oh, October 1st, actually. I'm Larry Rhodes, or DJ Daughter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. What's up? Flu shot injected, still here. All right, very good. Hmm. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faith, gods, holy books, and superstition, and posterianism. That's yeah. right. Uh, welcome, Dread Pirate Higgs. To ah, the show. thank you. <laughs> if you think you're the only non believer in your town, well, you're just not. Even here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us, 1,100 now, actually. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, and we'll tell you more about us after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Well, Matt, what's our topic today? I want to talk about good leaders and good management skills, and whether or not we see them in holy books of yore, or the current forms of religion today everyone is on the chopping board we're looking at muhammad we're looking at jesus we're looking at the flying spaghetti monster maybe even dread pirate higgs himself speaking of the man <laughs> welcome to the show wonderful gally you. would you mind leading us through a uh a passing of noodles and sauces sure <laughs> i can you. do that our noodly lord who art in a colander el dante be thy noodles thy blood be rum thy sauce be yum with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread and forgive us our cussing as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the noodles and the sauces and the meatballs whenever and ever. Raw oh, Guys, I'm feeling very pumped today. I just came back from a week-long sort of business trip slash vacation outside of my home state of Tennessee to Ohio and had a great training experience for my company in leadership and management. And I'd love to frame the discussion on that today. But before we get into that, we'd love to touch bases on everyone. Jerry Power, how you been since last week? Uh, not bad. Uh, this is my, I'm going into my final week of time off, mm -hmm. uh, which means I'll be heading up to Fort St. John next Sunday. Uh, for probably three months until the Christmas break and, okay. and then back down here for a couple and then back up there again for another three months. Very so good. my um, my uh, participation will be uh, potentially uh, sporadic and intermittent. But I'll, What's I'll the nature drop what I can. What's the nature? Well, time of off is better than time out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, for sure. Well, I've had, you know, it's a four, been four weeks. Um, the training I had hoped to uh, partake in in both instances from both institutions one was canceled and the other one was delayed a month so oh wow uh, i ended up having a whole month of time off mm. but it means i'm spending money and not making it <laughs> so sure, you know sure. there's, the a, there's, a, mm -hmm. there's a plus side i get to walk my dog mm -hmm. every day but at the same time uh you know i now i have to get back to work to make some more money now, what is the nature of this work this time? Because I know you've been a private eye, uh, fireman, security detail, uh, yeah. eaten, heathen, suing the government, uh, <laughs> malcontent in general. I'm sure there's malcontent, a lot of yes. that the British uh, government would have a So I'm, doing, I'm actually uh, an industrial medic in the oil and gas industry. Yeah, Very cool. So, Very cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, I also know. wanted to mention, too, that uh, in my ongoing plate with uh, ICBC, the Insurance Corporation of BC, that gives us our uh, our government issued id i have a pro bono lawyer who drafted a letter and sent it out to the uh, manager of driver's licensing integrity and oversight and we are waiting to hear back on the the shot that has been nice. passed across their bow uh we're going to take them to court if they for a judicial review view if they don't uh, relent Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm just preparing my judicial review now. Even well, on top of that, I'm yeah, glad thanks. to see that you're still making the regular posts on uh, the Zoom channel that, that yeah. ends up on your YouTube channel. Feel free yeah. to continue to do so. Like, it's good to get weird notifications at work 
and I'm in the laboratory <laughs> and it says, there's a pirate using your Zoom thing. And I'm like, I know what's mm -hmm. going on. I accept this. This is a good use of <laughs> corporate resources. <laughs> I support it. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Larry, how is that cereal, by the way? And how are you in general? Oh, it's very good. Okay. Uh, it's wheat squares. So I'm getting some some carbs, I guess, that way. Mm. Um, otherwise, I'm just doing okay. fine. Not riding my, my, my motorcycle. And pretty weather because of my trouble with my knee. But even it's getting better, so I feel good. Wonderful. Uh, speaking of motorcycles, I went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which is in Cleveland, Ohio, as part of uh, mm -hmm. some of the after class uh, fun stuff that we did with our uh, friends that I made at the uh, training session from last week. And I got to see Elvis Presley's motorcycle. Um, you know, I got to see a lot of other cool things, too. I think the my, my favorite thing about the framing of the Rock and Roll Museum is how much effort was made to get the uh the political impact of rock and roll accurate like the the cultural significance of it by showing like documents of people politicians parents recorded officials saying this is music that shouldn't be in america this is against our virtues this is going to corrupt our children this is the propaganda of these new rock and roll elitists and i'm looking back and i'm sitting this and i'm watching it and i'm so glad it was documented one and I'm so glad that the archives were kept and displayed in a museum because now rock and roll is ubiquitous. I, I would be hard pressed to imagine a genre that doesn't in some way call themselves rock or influenced by rock. Right. And it reminded me a lot of how people reacted or still do react to secular activities or, you know, just forms of entertainment that atheists can enjoy without necessarily having religion forced on them. A good example of which I'll throw out again. There's a game called Baldur's Gate. I don't know if you heard about it, but oh yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, one, one that's a D and D game or a game influenced by D and D, which was also ostracized by religious right as a game meant to corrupt our children. Not only that, but like one of the main characters in Baldur's Gate is a tiefling, which is a red-skinned, horned individual that has flames erupting from her body and is not only just a character but an actual love interest potentially same-sex love interest and the game is currently being lauded as like this wonderful experience for role-playing and the christians are very quiet as far as i'm aware the christians have been very quiet or religious white has been very quiet it's almost like the same way how rock and roll has become ubiquitous gaming has become ubiquitous too and i wonder what the leaders are saying and are they biding their time or are they recognizing that what they say can be recorded and they're only speaking to the people who are listening to them without cameras and microphones? That would be one of the things I'd love to know. But the leadership is really what I want to focus on because my training was in leadership and I wanted to course correct on the way how I've been managing, but also better critique leaders that I see in media and around me and who affect my life or who don't altogether. And that's not just the gods. It's also their prophets. It's their it's their followers. It's the church administrators. How are their leadership styles long term affecting the message that they you know uh, purport? And are they doing it in the best way possible? Is there any way we can course correct? So how about this? I want to throw out an example of a good leadership skill that I learned during this week. And we apply to uh, God because we like picking a Christian God. And then eventually I want to try on some of the prophets and uh, uh, mega church leaders and even Dread Pirate Hicks to see if if you're applying them in the same way too. Uh, one mm -hmm. of the things that I learned from my leadership training is feedback is important. And that there's a, why feedback is important is because communication's inherently important in a group activity. And you can't just expect to give out a message or goal and expect everything to be followed along because if it is, that's just a good worker. But in order to make sure that worker feels that their competency is recognized, that they feel like they're related to their work and that they have a level of autonomy, it's good to get feedback from them, understand what they like, what challenges they're having and have a play in the, in the actions that they're going through in order to get their tasks done. That from a leadership perspective, even if there's nothing that you need to do is a really good system, just getting the feedback because sometimes people need help and they need to express it. So if you're God and you say, these are my commandments, have at it. 
it'd be nice to just have some check-in after a while instead of just me praying to you saying, hey, I'm I'm struggling. I need some help. Maybe have the God come in and say, hey, just checking in. How are you doing so far? Uh, how is that thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife going? <laughs> <laughs> is everything going pretty well? Is there any issues here? No? Okay. Do you need anything from me? Okay. Well, continue. I just want to say that I recognize that you do- You take a lot of pride in what your afterlife will be uh, and that you very much value your soul. I just want to give you the feedback that I think you're doing a good job so far. And out. God out. Wonderful. Would be a wonderful sign, though. I don't see a lot of feedback in the God of the Christian God today. And what's unfortunate is in the Bible, there's a lot of feedback. There's a God that's very interventionist willing to come down, talk to people, smite people who are doing wrong. But in the last 2000 years, you know, like what we have now, we have a very much hands off God that only allows his followers to speak up for him. Larry, what do you think? Well, not if you listen to certain preachers, uh, if, like uh, the flood that happened in New Orleans, that was God. Mm. Uh, tornadoes that hit people, that's God, you know, et cetera, et cetera. He's still smiting people depending on who you talk to. Okay. Which le- sub leader that you're talking to? Mm. Is, according to them, he's still responsible for a lot for a lot of deaths. Now, the only problem with a hurricane or a flood is it tends to you you be uniformly damaging to a lot of different kinds of people. I'm not sure if every single person who was damaged wasn't a follower in God, though. I, what what do you think, Larry? Is that fair to say? And Dred, you're... well, I mean, it's been going on even in the Bible days that when David uh, took the census and he wasn't supposed to, uh, God didn't God didn't punish him. He he gave a plague to like forty thousand people. That wasn't their fault. I mean, they were quote innocent, but uh, because God didn't like it and uh, Ab- David uh, didn't obey him, you know, there had to be somebody punished. Right. And, uh, and it was right. indiscriminate. Dre, I'd love to get your feedback on the idea. Well, the the thing with gods and the people that, uh, you know, send his message down is that, you know, I mean, it goes back to the Bible that uh, we're uh, the flock of a shepherd. So we're not even in the same species. We're just animals to a god, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no, just like sheep don't, you know, you know, give feedback to God. Uh, we don't give feedback or uh, sheep don't give feedback to the shepherd. Um, people don't give feedback to God. You know, it's, it's, it's a really passive sort of thing where you pray and hope that your God is going to pay attention to you. But uh, as far as, you know, negotiating terms uh, or asking for better uh, you know, working conditions, hmm. uh, it's not going to happen. Dred, you bring up a really good catch 22. Compared to a God to where a mortal would be, if you were to take that text literally, I'm so much below even just livestock. I'm like pixels on a screen of a high intensity video game. And I'm just a couple of dead pixels. Why do I need to address those pixels? From my perspective of the producer or the director of a video game, I'm just going to tell people to get a different monitor and chuck the bad pixels, pixels out. There's such a lower level than where I'm at that it's not worth my time to be deliberately interventionist in one. However, we are talking about an all-powerful God who, one, should have the capability of doing that, and two, what does it say about a God that lords over dead pixels or lords over sheep? I would be Mm -hmm. far more impressed by a being that can at least have peers respect him rather than just always have a, like, if a God comes in, it's like, I'm a God of thimbles, and he jumps a bag full of thimbles on a table. These are all mine, and they all worship me. It's like, those are such lower objects compared to you as a person. Who cares? Like, why should that be an impressive point? If we're so insignificant, wh- what does that reflect on the authority of a God that lords over such insignificant mortals? I would love to rather see a God say, hey, listen, I care about you just as much as not my ch- sheep but my children or uh, a family member. And I care about you. And I want to have this interaction with you because I want to spend eternity with you. This is the levels of respect that we need to show each other. We'll establish that first. And then here are the rules and conducts that I'm setting up. And I'm going to check in with you every now and then, because I want to make sure that we have a built up relationship. We don't have anything like that. In fact, we're just subject to laws of nature. Dred, do you, do you feel like there's something missing with this relationship with at least Christian God? (laughs) yeah 
okay. Uh, a, a whole bunch of stuff. Again, I mean, it's, uh, you know, a shepherd keeps a flock for meat and for mm. wool, right? right? So there is something that the shepherd and the, you know, the other owners of the flock are getting from keeping sheep around. And, and so the question would be for me is, what's God keeping us around for? Like, what is he is it just so that we worship him and and you know and 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 you know just you know buy into his narcissism apparently uh, you know if that's it well i didn't sign up for that so i mean he could he can't be keeping us around just to test us because he know he knows all yeah he would know how we all get tested before we test us well, and, and the, the thing is and the thing is it makes us disposable right uh-huh I mean, you know, like when he got pissed off and and said, well, uh, you guys are all sinners. Uh, I'm going to send a flood, kill you all except uh, six people uh, and a couple of animals, uh, you know, and I just do this on a whim sort of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, very capricious. Right. Yeah. And, and, I will... and if you look at <clears throat> if you look at the Bible, there's quite a difference between God and Jesus's management styles. Even though yeah. <laughs> they're apparently uh, supposedly the same person. It's like yeah. good cop, bad cop. True. They're I, clearly not talking about the same God. I, no. I, I, I want to highlight this. There's a difference between the biblical version of Jesus and the today's interpretation of Jesus because there's good oh, cop or bad cop, good cop, and I super love you very much and I accept you all equally, cop, or whatever's popular at the moment, cop, right? Like popular yeah. cop. Um, Larry, you had made um, some allusion, allusions to. Uh, floods and earthquakes going on mm -hmm. well, a leadership training they refer to that as the stick as part of like a carrot mm -hmm. stick means of sure. motivating people they say mm -hmm. this is an outdated format for making sure that people are long-term motivated to do quality work at any sort of organization you can't just promise a carrot or a stick based on actions or or as a consequence for uh good work you can't just say hey if you do this i'll give you a bonus and if you do that I'm going to penalize you and write you up to HR. That's not motivating for a person to follow conduct or policies or even perform good work, even to be motivated to come in. Instead, what needs to be done as from a manager point of view is to find a way to recognize three things, uh, what are called the essential needs of a person, which is one, recognize their competencies. And that could just be their skill set, their experience, uh, the values that they have. Also, give them a sense of relatedness, allow them to collaborate, allow them to work with people, allow them to have a relationship where they can feel that it's not just them and that they are, in fact, in a team environment. And then the last one is give them a sense of autonomy, which is allowing them to have, one, primarily room to fail if they're working as your team, and also room to have accountability and ownership of the successes that they come up with. So room to fill, but also ownership of the successes. If you can give them those three things, you will satisfy their three basic needs. And note that in each of those things, I did not say stick. I did not say flood their homes. I didn't say uh, uh, send them an earthquake or a plague. These are all means to support the people or the workforce that you have or the, the members on your team, recognizing their competencies, giving them a sense of relatedness, and giving them autonomy in order to get their work uh, done effectively. And startlingly, start, startlingly, yeah. I did not see any of that from either God, Jesus, or even the new interpretation of Jesus. God is hands-on to a meticulous detail and now completely hands-off for the most part, unless if he's sending you an earthquake or uh, a tornado based on what your pastor is telling you. Sense of relatedness, I only know God. I don't know any, like... He's not giving me any sense of uh, ability to collaborate with anyone else in the supernatural being. In fact, God tells you explicitly, don't worship any other gods, just me. And I'm thinking, what other gods? <laughs> and then I, I've never had a uh, God recognize my sense of competencies, my skills, my free thought, my, uh, my intellectual pursuits. It's always just been worship me. Great. But when do I get a compliment? It'd be nice if it was at least... A night, uh, a pat on the back for some of the good stuff that I've done. Re can you recognize that? It would make me feel a lot better, more motivated to follow you. Um, uh, you know, it, it, it's interesting. I, I just participated in, um, I've, I've spoken of Bart Ehrman before. He's a New Testament scholar, very well respected and well known. Mm -hmm. And, uh, 
I just participated in a two day conference online. Uh, it's called uh, New Insights into the New Testament. And it actually talks about leadership uh, styles throughout the, the Gospels and also through uh, the contributions of uh, Paul um, and just how things changed over time in the space of, you know, the hundred years or so of Jesus' min supposed ministry and the writing of the Gospel of John about 70 to 100 years later. And you can see definitely how the interpretation leads to management styles, right? Or shapes management styles as far as uh, how um, people are directed to believe. So I thought that was very interesting. I, I agree. I think that'd be very interesting. In fact, I would love to see a management style that would recognize that it's okay to give affirmations and compliments on a more on a more frequent basis. It's I I find that some people are very motivated when they are given positive feedback on accomplishments that they have. I think that's the natural part of human condition. And I am hard pressed to think of what the best compliment given from either Jesus or God is in the Bible to a follower. I think the only thing I can think of is God saying, and you're my favorite, or God saying, you're my chosen ones. But I've never heard God say, because I happen to actually like, you know, your your motivation, your, your blah, blah, blah. It's always focused on me. I really love the way how you worship me and follow my rules and like me above all other gods. That's why I picked you. It's never a, I actually kind of think that, you know, you'd be a good template for other people to follow. I really like your family values. I think they stand up very well. And I just want to give you some specific feedback on maybe where you can course correct, but also why I support everything that you're doing at the moment right now. I never really get anything like that. You and know, in, in, in pastafarianism, like the flying spaghetti monster is more like a chum than he is mm. a, a, a heavy handed top down God. Okay. He just hangs out and, you know, we have fun together, you know, and uh, sort of, I mean, the fact that he created the universe in a drunken stupor uh, just speaks to the fact that he doesn't take himself so seriously either. Mm. And, uh, and neither do we. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, accepting that uh, life is absurd at okay. the, the base of it. And you might as well get used to it and just, uh, you know, let a lot more stuff roll off your back than uh, a lot of these hardline religious people do. So FSM, since you brought it up, I have a question. If we, I think the world would change dramatically if we had God come down and just say, oh, you guys are doing pretty good. Just checking up on you. Anyone need anything from you? Okay, fantastic. And then flies right back up again. Like if that happened once or twice a year, could you imagine how many people would be Christians today and how so oh, we showed up in, even <laughs> once a year and just gave a speech and went away. I mean, then, then at least you couldn't deny that he existed. I don't right. think there'd be a single atheist on the planet. No, the, no yeah. how, it's yeah. like somebody not yeah. believing the Empire State Building is there. Right. I think we would be uniformly one religion. However, whether or not we still worship the God could still be up to us to determine just right. based on mm -hmm. the action. If, so like, if his actions were worthy of worship. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Like if God does not like atheism, there's a very simple thing that God can do to fix that. Now, here's the question for FSM. Uh, in a similar manner, does FSM provide any meaningful feedback for, for uh, actions or is it literally just a laid back sort of, I wish you wouldn't rather do this. And, and yeah, well, that's, uh, the, you know, the, it's the eight I'd rather you didn't. It's not, uh, you know, the commandments. It's just, mm. uh, you know, it's about people interacting with people. Mm. That's, that's what it comes down to. It's not about, uh, you know, don't worship other gods before me or, uh, you know, big build big multi million dollar temples in, you know, support of my holy name or whatever. Uh, it's about treating people with respect and dignity and kindness and humor and love and all that good stuff. Um, it's about people. Our it's religion is about people. It's not really about God. It's not about the FSM so much as it is about people treating each other well. I see. So would you then, would you, was it fair to say then that in order to fact check or to test the criteria of whether or not you're being a good fsm follower isn't so much looking at the book or what the flying spaghetti monster tells you but to ask other people hey based on this list how well am i doing like am i 
not yeah. being a jerk? Am I celebrating life in general? Like, give me your feedback. Is that yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Mm, I kind of like. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it is. It is totally that. And okay. again, like I said, it's about not taking yourself so seriously. Mm. Understanding that there are things and, you know, answers to questions about the universe, about our existence, that we will never, ever know for sure. Mm. Uh, and and to, you know, take that on the chin and say, well, you know, I don't necessarily need to know, but I can be happy about my life and the way I interact with people and the universe I live in. I can have fun with it while I'm here mm. and um, just leave it at that. I can also say that if there's a beer, if there's a beer volcano and a stripper factory at the end, all the better. If it, if there is, all the better. Um, so I had a a, a follow up in that, um, if from a scientific or a lack of God point of view, do we have solutions for any of these problems that I I talked about? And I would say it's just the basic leadership. Uh, training that I had today, but also like the general leadership management skills you can find on YouTube. They are backed by inferencing how well you're doing from the people who are around you and not from looking at a holy text or asking uh, feedback from a supernatural God. You can just talk to the people that you're managing and get feedback from them. And so I would love to see God request feedback from us. That way we can improve our policies moving forward. Larry, I think we're getting close to a break. We are. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Recording. Okay, are you ready? Yep. Okay. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dowder 5 and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's just take a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002, where in our 21st year, have over 1,000 members, actually 1,100. Now, I have to edit that. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. That's every Tuesday evening. Just come after work. Look for us inside at the high top tables if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. You can find us online, Facebook, meetup.com, or at our website, knoxvilleatheist.org. You can also just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you, sh you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. Right. Wombat, where do you want to pick up? I want to touch on some extra leadership management skills, particularly these two de-escalation and resolving conflict among your team members, right? Because we know we live in a world where there's different kinds of ideas, different ideas, different method ideologies and people and ego. And for the myriad of reasons why people may come into conflict, it can occur even on the same team. As a leader and manager, it's your job to make sure that your team can stay focused on the bigger picture, the, the main task that's ahead of them, whatever project there is, and can collaboratively work together. Now, here's the thing. Uh, Earth has a lot of different people on it. Earth has a lot of different people who may disagree with each other. And certainly we have a history of conflict, even among our species. Um, when I look back at variations of the Bible, I can see that in almost every circumstance, God will come into the situation and say, oh, there's conflict. You guys are my chosen people. <laughs> <laughs> I picked this side. <laughs> I picked this side. And what about each sports game? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I picked both sides. <laughs> or both of you guys worship me, and one of you guys are going to win, and the one who wins, that's the one God chose. Right, right. God tends to like to pick sides. And what's unfortunate by that is it doesn't help to resolve the conflict until there's only one side left, right? And even when there's one side left, that side is going to bifurcate just due to how culture bifurcates. And there's going to be more conflict and animosity after the fact. So the better ways of resolving conflict that I found, or at least through the meeting, was by getting your followers in a room or talking it out, getting the feedback in, and helping them address through dialogue exchanges. Uh, some of the even the SE stuff that we've learned, Jed, is to make sure we're talking about our methodologies, make sure that we understand what the issue is, and try to help provide the tools that they need 
to resolve their situation and that you're right. just basically the coach allowing them to work together more effectively. You're not doing it for them. You're not picking a side. You're giving them the tools. Dred, what do you think? Well, I just uh, actually had a comment here uh, on because I'm live streaming. Uh, good morning. This is resonating with me so much in how the street epistemology community is not led. Mm. Uh, the freedom and autonomy are nice, but there's some sense that I could ask for what I needed. And uh, I've actually been working with Anthony Magnabosco and uh, read uh, read what's a nice wonder um, on developing the street epistemology course that's going to be put out uh, to the public here at some point. Um, but I like her point. Uh, you know, this is um, you you can't ask you, you can't ask and get a certain answer from God mm -hmm. or be certain of the answer you get. Right. Because, of course, it's just coming out of your own head or it's coming out of the pastor's mouth. Right. So. Larry, do you have anything? And, and different pastors will give you different answers and different viewpoints on every, pretty much any question. Well, because fundamentally it is just <clears throat> it's a practice of interpreting. Right. So yeah, it is a matter of interpretation. And the, I think the main thing is giving the people who are subject to your guidance, the tools necessary for them to come up with their own conflict resolution and not to exacerbate it, the issue by picking a side overwhelmingly, or even like to the point where it's obvious that you've established a favorite or a chosen group. And if there is conflict that you do make some steps to resolve it before it becomes violent or starts to have a very poor effect on the culture, the work or the planet. And I find if there's one thing that gods in history have not done well is to help resolve in a peaceful format, the conflict that their followers are having by giving them the tools necessary to speak to people who have different mindsets. And so I'm going to throw up the fine spaghetti monster. Listen, there's still wars. There's still people, you know, uh, at each other's throats. There's still ideologies that are not compatible. What has FSM done to resolve any of that? Or any of the, uh, I would say, leaders of FSM? Uh, well, I think, you know, Pastafarians are just trying to be better people. <laughs> so, again, uh, it's, it's, it's about people. It's not about what the God is doing for us. It's uh, what we are doing for each other. Um, and, you know, that's a, t that's a tough, tough question. Uh, I'd have to give that uh, more thought, but. Okay. Then personally, uh, what are you doing? I think, I think really for, for me, mm. uh, my connection to the FSM is my connection to that, uh, to those unknown aspects of my existence um, that I'll never have an answer for, but which give me awe and wonder and a uh, sense of joy and, um, and you know, helps me feel better about other people despite uh, our mutual flaws and uh, the other vicissitudes of life. Um, that's how my belief in the FSM helps me. Okay, okay. I'll... Go ahead, Larry. Oh, you're on I have a mind. question for Adam, uh, Dred. Sorry, where to get Adam? Um, you don't have a, a problem with people who are not FSMs uh, doing what they want, right? It's not like it's Christianity where it's a non-Christian has to obey the rules of Christianity. Like uh, you see them all the time. You know, uh, homosexuality is bad. You better not do homosexuality. Right. But I'm not a Christian. It doesn't matter. He's the right. God of all of us. Um, flying spaghetti monster does not partake in that type of attitude, no, does it? No. And, and like I've said before, uh, there's the God back guarantee. You know, you try out the FSM for 30 days, if you don't <laughs> like it, uh, yeah. your old God will likely take you back. So, yeah, yeah. he's pretty relaxed. Dred, Dred, though, let me ask this question. If it is about the people and it is about being a good person and there is no true feedback mechanism from FSM, why do you need FSM to begin with? And why not just be a good person without it? Because it, again, reflects uh, the unknown aspects of the universe and of my existence. It's it's uh, it's like a placeholder. If we find out that for sure there is no 
um, spiritual aspect or there's no uh, other kind of aspect to our existence other than a completely materialistic one, then fine, I, we can live with that. But until that day, uh, which will not be in my lifetime, um, there's there's always room. I'm agnostic to uh, whether or not there's something beyond uh, the physical reality of our existence. And so that I call the FSM. And uh, because of its, you know, the sort of lighthearted aspect of it mm -hmm. and, you know, the, uh, the infusion of humor and satire and parody and all the rest. Or community. It, it allows me to laugh at myself. So it makes me just be humble. That's, there it is right there. I'm humble yeah. about my own understanding and how far I will ever understand. So sure. again, it's a, it's a way to... Um, you know, keep the attention off my own head. Sure. You know? So if I could pull this out, it sounds like you found a good way to express humility and uh, a healthy ex uh, expression of ignorance about the fate of the universe. Yeah, a way that can make it comfortable for other people so they can collaborate and have a sense of community so you don't just feel like the only person in a pirate hat. Like there's a bunch of other people too that you can join in with and have like really good camaraderie with. And then yeah. along with that, because there's no explicit commandments, you have the autonomy to be able to express yourself on your own time in your own manner and simply wish for people to respect that in the same way that they can express themselves. And yeah. when you say, say those things, I hear the same three basic needs that a leader should recognize, which is uh, your competency, which is, hey, you, you can be humble, you can express yourself with humility, and you, you're looking for proper venues to improve yourself as a person relatedness where you do look for that uh sense of camaraderie for other people and community with other people and then autonomy which is i need to have the control to do so of uh, uh be an fsm and view what it means to me in my own terms right mm -hmm. and a good leader re would recognize those three things and allow those to continue to bloom yeah. though when i look at you know the more popular religions i find that competency is either completely ignored or used as a means to pat the God on the back. I have good followers because I'm a good person, right? And the people who don't follow me are bad. I but what makes what makes an action good apart from the God? Like, can a person be good without God? And can we highlight those good attributes without it relating to a God or a higher power to begin with? And a lot of Christianity, no, that's not possible. In fact, my devout Christian friends here, even in Tennessee, would even admit that they don't see themselves as a good person because they can't because to do so would be some sort of description of um what's the right word i'm looking for uh it's the same uh, pride and and pride itself is a, a connotized uh virtue that's not allowed to have what do you think larry well it would directly contradict the bible itself who says that all of us are sinners right I mean, right if you have pride in yourself you know and you're a sinner then it's a contradiction and Anyway, how can you think good of yourself if you're a, a born a dirty sinner and seek the rest of your life just right. to please God so you can get into his fantasy at the end? And think about that as a system. Like, you can't even think of yourself as a good person if you right. follow God. You have to worship God and yeah. recognize him as a good person, but you can't even do that in yourself. You lack that competency. You can't even give yourself the ability to call well, yourself a good person. It's an abusive system. Yes. I mean, yes. if you had a, if you had another person who told you you were worthless without them, mm -hmm. you know that would be classed as abuse. Right, that you right. could never be good enough for them. You know, type of thing. It'd be a degenerate, if anything. And um, it's it's one of those uh, cognitive dissonance things where you're born a dirty sinner, you can never be good enough, and all this stuff. But mm -hmm. you're this special creation of the Creator of the universe who loves you so much that you know more than any parent ever loved a child it's right. two dichotomy of things that you got to believe that are contradictory yeah, yeah think of it as like a drug dealer saying hey you're nothing good without me and 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 still gives you the, the first one's free and the or first even a boyfriend free. or girlfriend mm, yeah absolutely well yeah. you know and another thing that's kind of built into that is the idea of karma you know that uh you know we uh you know in victimhood that uh you know you're poor or you're destitute or you're down and out or something bad has happened to you and it's somehow your fault that you blame the victim 
they blame the victim and um, and that is essentially what uh christianity is or well like, all the abrahamic <clears throat> religions essentially yeah like are, uh, you're the one victim blaming right right it's like you're right the one the who survives survives yeah. the uh, car crash and all of everybody else dies well you must be living right that assumes yeah. and projects that everybody else in the car was not living right right the third dirty sinners that they got punished. or even worse like a plane crash you know the survivors right. Oh, God has a special purpose for me. And all these other people died. Well, they, they must have had it coming. Right. Exactly. <laughs> well, look at the second pillar of human needs. We talked about competency, recognizing that people can be good, recognizing that they can be humble. I don't see that from the Christian God. I don't see any recognition. If anything, I see God holding back deliberately that recognition of good people so that they continue to follow a supposedly good God. The second tier of that, though, is relatedness, the sense of collaboration, the camaraderie. Dread, you're referring to, I like being around other people who also try to improve themselves as people, have a sense of community, have that humor, and also don't take themselves seriously. And finding people like that enriches my life, gives me more ability to get feedback on the list of thou shalt, I'd rather you shouldn't, and, and get the feedback on whether or not I'm improving myself as a person. In mm -hmm. Christianity... You tend to lock yourself in an echo chamber with just other Christians who believe in the exact same version of the holy text as you do. We know that for a fact that there's a lot of different denominations of Christianity. At my state, there might be two Christ, uh, temples on the same block, and the people in block on one side of the block would say, don't go to that church. We have this, this, that, but the pastor over there is pretty bad. And you go to the other one, it's like, hey, that pastor, they might say this thing about us, but we don't we don't believe or subscribe to their points of view. And we don't talk to each other. We don't agree to each other, even though their parking lots are in the same uh, place. I've seen that happen. What's up, Dred? Well, I was, I was going to say that, uh, you know, in most religions I've been exposed to, uh, you know, if you compare it to um, uh, the, the, the Navy, say, mm -hmm. of, uh, of a large country, um, like Britain or whatever, you have the officer class and there's a hierarchy, right? And that works everywhere in all these uh, naval um, uh, naval situations. In, in piracy, which is what Pastafarians fashion themselves after, there was a charter you signed on to where everyone did had you know equal responsibilities in the work share and received an equal share of the bounty whenever they got some and it wasn't uh you know the top down thing it was everyone knew their position and it was actually very very free and a lot of mutual respect so uh you know just to the governance system since this is what we're talking about is really that that difference and a lot of people who worked um you know as as crew in in navies uh whatnot would once escape uh, they would join in with a pirate crew where they uh, were actually granted freedom, freedom and respect and uh, were allowed to uh, make their own fortunes. Nice. Wonderful. And and you, the, the highlights I'd say that is a crew, right? It wasn't just yeah. a band of individuals. It was a bunch of people coming together. It was together. a crew, yeah. For Relatedness. Sure. Relatedness yeah, is important. They had like a constitution and a charter and all that kind of stuff, and they had to sign on to it. Yep. And, you know... Captains were voted in or voted out. You yep. know, it's yep. yeah. So the much more uh, democratic than anything that was ever uh, available in in any of the military. Um, you know, and the main point that I'm bringing for leadership is not that they give teams competence; it's that they recognize competence. It's that they yeah. recognize relatedness, and that they allow those to foster among their team. But in Christianity, I don't see recognition of competence in terms of like being good or moral or ethical person. And I don't see what can foster good relatedness or community, because if anything, it's just a community that's looking among themselves. There's no intranetwork of support with people with different ideas, different ideologies. And when you have a culture that doesn't change, you have a dying culture because culture is meant to evolve with time. It's meant to change. It's meant to become bigger and learn from other cultures. That's the that's a rich culture. And it's one of the reasons why I love America. Because there's just a bunch of different people coming together and learning from each other. And without that, you have a culture that is styed, potentially too conservative, and ultimately one that can't last forever. 
And we see it in Christianity. It's continuously trying to adopt popular trends to pull more people in, which leads to the people who are in that community being very resistant about these number of changes. What? You're letting females be pastors or priests? What? You're saying we can accept gay people? What? You're saying women should have rights? I don't, this isn't, this isn't the program that you sold us under. Yeah. It's That's like true. the Taliban in Iran, right? Yes, yes, yes. Conflict with being shaken up into a modern uh, culture. Larry actually had it uh, on the, he said uh, a while back ago that uh, the more, egalitarian or the more uh worldly a religion becomes the more they pull away from their dogma the better uh larry would you mind rephrasing that again if you remember it oh i'll have to look it up i I created a meme a long time ago and and floated it out there but um let me find it real quick i'd like to be able to quote it exactly the exact nature of it was essentially when you have a dogma and the less you follow it the more tends to be that you become more compassionate more capable of interacting with people from all around the world and yeah. it's not a it's not a coincidence it's by fact that you just recognize that there's different people and they can also be good at to, at the same time too and that being different doesn't mean that our hearts don't speak the same language right i and you know to be honest i think that's where uh, pastafarianism is is a good example of uh, the moving away from strict dogma orthodoxy mm-hmm. and into a more um uh, responsive uh belief system right um okay larry he's got memes i found it it says i believe that christians and muslims are peaceful moral and productive members of modern society in direct proportion to how much they leave the literal teachings of their scriptures behind right right nice and again it's not i think it's a both a causation and a, and a correlation there like i do see well, as soon as you drop the instructions sure. up us versus mm-hmm. them and start yeah. realizing hey well, how, yeah in the how same many pool. nice uh progressive uh christians and muslims do you know of who right. are also strict christians and muslims hmm. it's, Very cute. it's dichotomy yeah. there yeah. yeah uh i'm also going to throw out one last pillar of the human needs which is autonomy and it's recognizing that people like to have uh well it's, what's the proper pirate metaphor control of their own ship is that the right way? They like to be. They like to steer. their own rudder. <laughs> they like to steer. Their yeah, own they're, rudder. yeah, they're 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 on the wheel. Right. Uh-huh. What's the point of being a good person if you have a god who's literally in control of every component of physics, guiding you from one point to next interaction, knowing what your actions are going to be, and essentially governing every single component of how fast your heart beats, what thoughts are in your head, and mm-hmm. how fast you drive down the street. Like that more morality is not obedience, as Larry would say. It's it's right. being able to conduct yourself with the knowledge of the consequences of your own action and doing so, whether it's in a model in your head or through actual demonstrable actions. Yeah. And it's and, it's a, it's actually the platinum rule. Are you familiar ooh, with the platinum, platinum rule? rule? Give it to me. Give yeah. it to me. So you know, there's the golden rule, do unto others as you know, others would do unto you. Mm-hmm. Uh do unto others as they would have you do unto them. Mm, treat people how right. they want to be treated treat or people don't, how they want to be treated or don't and it, do that builds choice. empathy it builds sympathy it builds uh respect for other people's viewpoints right i don't know if this counts as the wooden rule but it's mine which is as simple <laughs> as this don't be a jerk <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's yeah. the foundational rule listen you don't have to be a good person you in fact if you are a good person fantastic but if you are obligated to be good then what's the point of being good? You're just doing what you're supposed to do. You're just doing what you ought to do. But if you are, if you if you follow the mandate of I ought to not be a jerk, at least you're not holding people back, right? At least you're not hurting people or going out of your way to cause unnecessary harm, which is the one thing we can all agree we don't need, unnecessary harm. And if you're a good well, person I, on top of that, fantastic. That's even better. That's icing on top of the yeah. cake. But yeah. don't be a jerk. Um, and Bill and Ted's uh, would say, be excellent to each other. <laughs> yes. be excellent to one another right yeah, yeah. but along with that regardless <laughs> of whatever rules you follow make up those rules that you need to conduct yourself on society have the autonomy to understand what your consequences of actions are and give me if you're I'm a if i'm a leader give or if, if i have if i have a leader give me room to make mistakes and learn from them in the same way that i can own the successes and the accomplish, accomplishments that i do make if mm-hmm. my team wins a football game because i trained and I they, they put the microphone in my face. It's like, why'd you win? 
because my team practiced a lot. <laughs> You'll never mm-hmm. figure that. It's like we had really good coaches and they all trained us really hard and we worked really hard for it. You just say, nope, it was God, the su- most powerful being in the universe dictated that we would win today. And that's why we won today. Right. It's such a uh, offering of the lack of personal responsibility. And, and likewise, when someone loses, it's like, why'd you lose? Well, yeah. no one ever blames God. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw I saw recently a great a great meme on uh, hmm. on Facebook where you know you see a, a guy um, out in the sports field you know pointing to heaven because he just scored and says something to the effect that uh, so God just uh, helped you score. Let me go tell all the ca- cancer patients at the hospital. <laughs> That's a shame. It's a shame, yeah. right? Yeah, it is. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you don't want to close yourself from that relatedness and you do want to be more you want to have a better display of your humility i, I would say for one and um, and then the third one is just you want to be autonomous you want to be able to own your accomplishments but also own your failures too and learn from both i feel like if you had a leader that can embody all those three things you could have a fantastic leader worth worshiping that's a completely different question but at least worth being your leader or your manager in a spiritual or a non-spiritual sense even the better that's that's my takeaways larry what do you for think? what for what it's worth i don't believe in the concept of worshiping i don't think okay. we should worship anything or anyone okay. yeah i think worship puts you puts your followers at such a lower level below you that you can't respect their competency autonomy and you put them on such a distant level that you can't relate yeah. with them you lose yeah. all three basic needs any yeah. god well, again it, it's worship. the difference between a shepherd and a flock right yeah, they're not they're they're not even in the same, you know, they're not even in the same species, <clears> you know, like yeah. it's just yeah, worship is just yeah, Going one on, nothing sh- worthy of it. One should keep in mind what the why the shepherd keeps the flock. Yes, he wants to shear them and eventually eat them. Right, yeah. exactly. So, my overall takeaway, just to summarize. Some of the points is it's not a carrot and stick situation to be a good leader. You don't just punish and then reward. And it's in the very similar way how God does with heaven and hell. It is very much a recognition, a personable, genuine recognition of your followers or your employees or your, your team members' competency, their sense of relatedness, and their autonomy. If you can recognize those three things, you can actually better be or you can become a better leader. And we should demand that from our gods as much as our current managers. Uh, it's our three basic needs. We want to feel uh, competent. We want to have a sense of relationships with people. And we want to be autonomous. Recognize those and you do a much better job as a leader otherwise, than otherwise. Uh, final words, Dread Pirate Higgs, what do you got? Lead from behind. Mm. <laughs> eh? I like it. Don't always be out at front uh, trying to get everyone to follow you. Lead from behind. Do good things, show people good things, and uh, and be, a good example. be inclined to participate as opposed to be led. Uh, so, yeah. Nice. Cool. Larry? Oh, uh, what about you, Ty? You I just gave, I gave him a final words, unless you want more final words, but Larry, go ahead. Yeah, what? give us more. <laughs> All right. Uh, my favorite takeaway from the Rock and Roll Museum in Cleveland is how much effort they made to get the messaging right of how much Black culture was involved in the creation of rock and roll. R&B, uh, blues, um, just like all jazz. Uh, a jazz, a number of genres that infused and was able to join mm-hmm. in this beautiful intermix of culture that uh, like everybody could enjoy. I just love the fact that it was a recognition <clears throat> of different people coming together to make something beautiful and, that we can all enjoy. Try, That's try culture, in, baby. Right, and try to keep in mind how much the religious right or just the religious wanted to keep rock and roll out of their society yes. when it was an inception. Right. And what, Maybe... what are they trying to keep out of our society right now? Keep right, right, mind. right. And and I can see how scared they were in that there's a lot of different people coming together, young people, very popular, different mm-hmm. kinds of people. This could be an enjoying themselves too. Exactly. Sharing <laughs> cultures like this is not good for us. This right. is why we need to fight It's it. distracting from from them. And Dred, you want to tell us about uh, your website and your, your YouTube What's channel? This? Me? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you can find my stuff on YouTube at Mind Pirate, M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E. I live stream this when I'm able, when I'm on uh, Sunday mornings, uh, Pacific Standard Time or Daylight Time. 
um, at seven o'clock in the morning. And then I do. We, the, we appreciate uh, you getting up early for us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I even have, I haven't had my cereal yet. I oh, wow. Well. have to get some cocoa puffs or something. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so uh, come check it out. Uh, I've got 173 subscribers. That's I'm, I'm doing, I'm rocking. So nice. if you like it, Very subscribe. Good. Every week also, I on Fridays, uh, I try to get on to do a, a, a short and dirty sermon uh, for the Pastafarians. If you want to have a three and a half minute to five minute snippet of, you know, Pastafarian wisdom, come check it out. Sounds good. My content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, Atheist Songs. Yes, there are songs. Uh, Steve Martin, there are. And many articles on the subject. My YouTube channel is at Doubter5. And you can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon. There it is. Thanks, Derek. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock here on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Good show, everybody. Excellent. Okay. Okay.